Use of the Covidian VLOC suture for vesicourethral anastomosis during robot-assisted radical prostatectomy. Surgery and narration by Dr. Kevin Zorn. The VLOC suture is a novel self-retaining suture with unidirectional barbs. It is also unique in that it has an end anchoring loop to eliminate knot tying. The material is completely absorbable and is enzymatically degraded within several weeks. For the attachment of the bladder to the urethra, we are presently using two 6-inch 3.0 V-lock sutures interlocked together in this configuration. It requires less than a minute to set up for our nursing personnel. Upon the completion of radical prostatectomy, there is a discontinuity between the bladder and urethra. However, the bladder has been mobilized and can easily descend into the pelvis to allow for a tension-free anastomosis. The VLOC suture is then introduced to begin the reconstruction. With robotic precision, at least 12 to 15 sutures are placed around a tube no bigger than a pen to allow for watertight closure. This compares to 4 to 5 sutures during open conventional surgery. The following live case presentation will highlight the use of the knotless V-lock suture for reconstruction. Here we see the pterotic fossa upon completion of a bilateral nerve sparing prostatectomy. The nerves are the vertical pedicles in the center of the screen. At this point, the bedside assistant has introduced the V-lock suture to the surgeon's robotic needle drivers. We begin the anastomosis with the left-sided VLOC suture being anchored at the 5 o'clock position of the bladder neck. The cut de Novalier's fascia and the detrusor muscle are grasped and pass through without entering into the bladder. The suture slack is moved by a hand-over-hand -hand technique up until the point of the interlocked VLOX within the bladder muscle. We then position the needle toward the urethra and the assistant introduces a Foley catheter so as only to grab the posterior cut de Novaliers. This reapproximation is referred to as a posterior reconstruction as initially described by Dr. Bernardo in the 1990s. This will help create a posterior plate in which to buffer the anastomosis and in several studies helps promote earlier return to pad-free continence. Note the precision of the bites and the fluidity of hand motion. Here we see the assistant at the bedside detaching the grasp of the bladder so as to allow the bladder to be introduced deeper into the pelvis and bridge the gap. Here we can see a second bite of the posterior urethral plate and making sure not to injure the neurovascular bundles just adjacent to it. Again, a bite through the posterior bladder is taken and finally, we will reapproximate with no tension the left sided suture. Note that once this tension is achieved, we let go of the suture and there is no back cinching. Now we begin the initial bite at 6 o'clock with the left sided suture of the anastomosis. The assistant will now replace the tip of the Foley catheter so as to ensure that we are grabbing the right tissues. Once again, meticulous care is made not to injure the preserved nerve bundles on both sides. Note the left-sided placement with freedom 
from the nerve tissue. We will continue this from a 6 o'clock to approximately a 9 o'clock position and then complete the right side before finalizing the left sided anastomosis. What is also advantageous about robotic suturing is the fact that a continuous running suture can be employed. With conventional open surgery, four to five bites are taken with micro gaps between those sutures, which require a longer Foley catheterization. This running suture eliminates surgical time and potentially urine leaks. What is also great about the VLOC suture is that once that tension that is desired is achieved, there's no further worry that the suture may loosen in the previous bites. We now begin the right-sided anastomosis with the initial bite with the right-sided suture once on the bladder and now on the urethra with again care not to injure the nerve tissue. It is also important for the surgeon, especially at these initial bites, not to take too large of a bladder bite and to be very cognizant of the ureteral orifices, the tubes which drain both kidneys. Failure to do so may incorporate them in the anastomosis and lead to urine leak or an obstructed kidney. Here we see continuing right-sided sutures being thrown on the urethra, cinching, then bladder. This is repeated several times, at least six to eight per side, each time making a V with the dominant hand on the tissues to precise our tension. Once that's achieved, the novelty of the VLOC suture allows for that tension to be maintained. Tissue bites are taken approximately three to four millimeters apart. And depending on the size of the bladder neck, the surgeon may take larger paces to parachute down for the discrepancy. The urethra is usually the size of a pen and the bladder neck could be anywhere from the size of a pen to the size of a nickel or a quarter. Other techniques to realign these two tubes to a similar size involve a various technique of reconstruction. These are either could include figure of eight sutures at this three and nine o'clock positions to taper the bladder neck or an anterior or posterior tennis racket suture to fashion the bladder neck down to the size of the urethra. This is dependent on surgeon experience and preference. Here we can see the final few bites of the right sided suture with ease of instrument passage the assistant will momentarily come in as well with a suction to rid the tissue of any blood clots. Here we come back to the left-sided suture, which was left unfinished at the three at the nine o'clock position. And sutures are the, similarly placed through the bladder, taken, and then replaced through the urethra. V-cinch on both sides and once this final anastomosis is complete the surgeon observes that whether or not the barbs are used up until the last two to three centimeters of the suture. Here we have a considerable amount of space between the needle and the suture so that there are barbs as can be seen here through the last bite on the tissue. It is for this reason that tying a knot or placing a lapper tie clip, such as in the last video, is not required.
Again, surgeon preference determines this. Here we can simply snap the sutures and bring both needles outside the body. The assistant's Marilyn Grasper comes to individually remove each suture. The purple suture at the very bottom of the screen left is that of the endocatch bag with the specimen being the prostate and seminal vesicles raised higher in the abdomen out of the surgical field during this part of the surgery. The assistant is now bringing in the final Foley catheter and blowing up 10 cc's or milliliters into the balloon of the catheter. Prior to case completion, we always ensure a watertight closure with 300 milliliters of water. Here, the assistant has already inserted 60 cc's into the bladder through the catheter and using that same 60 milliliter syringe will continue to infuse 60 milliliters of saline into the bladder. Direct inspection attributed by robotic technology is incredible. In the event that there is a leak, future further uh, sutures are placed or the previous sutures can be retightened and re-cinched. Here we now have 240 milliliters with the anterior and gutter spaces being checked for any leak. And finally, the last 60 cc's for a 300 cc cystogram. Normally this is done seven days after surgery before Foley removal. It is because of the VLOC suture and the robotic anastomosis that patients have a shorter catheterization and a more rapid recovery and in our opinion a better quality of life.